is Hoyte Van Hoyte, man. Yes, my friend. I love that Both guy. shot on film. Yep, I, I, that's my opening question. What a luxury. Yeah, yeah. I love 35, man. Yeah. I love 35. Yeah. Those shots in the back of the car when Sharon and Polanski are driving with the hair, it's I know. so cool. Kevin, name yeah. Outlet, please. yeah, Kevin McCarthy. Hey guys, we are going. What was, oh, wait, okay. Because I got a, I got a geek question. Phantom Thread, when they're in the driving shots. Yes. Do they shoot that on film? Oh, yeah, that was shot 35, and yeah. then they blew it up to 70. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, PTA actually did this really cool thing. If you went to the arc like to see that movie, they had a special playlist of songs playing as you sat in the theater before the movie started. Pretty ah, cool. Ah, yeah. delicious. Yeah. First of all, congratulations to you. Thanks. I have always found that the movies you make, the directors allow the cinematography and score to be leading characters as well. Mm. And if you look at something like Deacons on Jesse James when he was blurring out those so left and right side yeah. of the frame, yeah. or Robert Richardson when we follow your character into the drive-in, over the drive-in theater to, to your trailer. And then now this Hoyte Van Hoytema, who's one of my favorite cinematographers ever, mm -hmm. John Interstellar, and then this. What's your relationship like with the DP in the sense of how it affects your performance? And what, as you're acting, what's that relationship like with the lighting and the shot? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a cinematography geek as well. And being a film lover, and it's everything. These images yeah, be, you know, are everything. And I've been really fortunate to, um, to work with these guys. And I do, I agree with you, Hoyte Van Hoytema is one of our best. Um, you just, you know, it's a lot of it, you don't, it's just a complete trust. Really, the, our relationship with the DP is we're just having a, a, you know, a laugh, some levity. And then he'll tell you if he needs you to be somewhere or where the light, you know, with what he's trying to, to achieve. And, and, and you just go with it. You, you make it work. Yeah. Um, often you don't see the final result until it goes through the processing and, and it's color corrected and you see, oh, that's what he knew it would be um, in the end all along. In fact, they always say, it's not gonna look like that, it's not gonna look like that. Hmm. It's like their disclaimer when you're checking out the framing of a shot where you need to be. They're going, it's not going to look like that. It's not going to look like that. But a shot in like Fight Club, for example, like if Fincher's coming towards you and you're doing that, and, and the camera's like shaking visibly and you do that yeah. line, do you, is it shaking there or is that done in post um, when he comes towards you like that? I don't remember. I mean, because Fincher's a mad genius with, <laughs> with uh, camera technique. So I think, I believe I remember it shaking. <laughs> Yes, I believe it was shaking then. That's an amazing moment. There's a great sequence in the film where you talk about Tommy Lee Jones' character, your father, taking you to black and white films as a kid. His character likes musicals. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've talked a lot about going to see Alien with your father, but I was curious, was there a particular movie, a movie that hit you so hard when you were younger that it created this idea that I want to be an actor? No, in fact, I mean, yes, but no. But I didn't mm -hmm. know it. I didn't ever thought about acting as, a, as an option. Um, it, I mean, because it wasn't an option where I grew up. It was, I grew up in the middle of America um, in the Ozarks, and it was, um, it just wasn't on the curriculum list of options, mm. you know? It wasn't until it hit me two weeks before I was going to graduate that, you know what, I'm going to go to it, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to go to it. Um, but uh, I do have, I remember this, I have this indelible experience. We'd always go to the drive-in theater and sit out on the hood of the car, my mom and dad, and my brother and sister, and, and uh, in great, you know, summer night air, and seeing Butch and Sundance when I was in kindergarten. I think I was in kindergarten or first grade, mm. or second grade, somewhere in there, and just be bawling at the end. I couldn't believe they were dead. I didn't want them, I didn't want them gone. Yeah, and uh, and trying to hide that from my parents because I was embarrassed. There's an amazing sequence in this film in the beginning. I, I, I love your arc of your character in this film because it, to me it's like a subtle breaking uh, as he's becoming more emotional throughout the film and letting those emotions come out. And there's a great moment in the beginning where you kind of like in your inner monologue saying, put a smile on, I'm looking for the exit on the door. The guy comes up to you and tries to grab you and, mm -hmm. or hug you, whatever. I was curious, like shooting a sequence like that, I mean, that's a very interesting thing because as an actor or like you deal with those things in real life as well, like playing that sequence out, like what, is that, is it cathartic to shoot a moment like that in a movie? Well, you, you again, um, so much of it is um, discovery. Hmm. Do, do you know, like, we didn't know exactly how we were going to end this film. We didn't know how we would um, tonally achieve in each scene the feelings that we were talking about. We didn't, we just knew what we were after in this idea of, of how do you portray not being, um, being disconnected hmm. and wanting, yearning for more but not having the, the ability to, to do it. 
Hmm. And so scenes like that all just become steps in calibrating this gentle cracking of the egg until it's an amazing till moment. The flood, till, <laughs> till the floodgates open. Um, my favorite shot in the film, some of the, I mean, been wait a minute, ever since I saw Interstellar, I've just been blown away by the way he operates film. Mm -hmm. um, the sequence when you were falling to Earth in the beginning of the movie, it's in the trailers. Um, how are they achieving the shots of you just in your helmet, screaming as you're spinning? Are you doing any of the spinning on wires, or is it just the camera moving around you? Uh, it's both. It's cool. uh, this incredible, we had a great, great stunt team led by, led by Rob Alonzo, who came up with this thing that would spin us, spin me on a, like a, like on a cross, but then would also be moving back and forth. And then the camera's on this great gyro head that, that can spin like this. So <laughs> it, it feels like, you know, we're all over the, all over the place. But these are, you know, these take a lot of thought going into them and that's, um, um, and they, they really pay off. Last two questions for you. Uh, you've worked with some of the greatest directors in the history of movies, and I genuinely think you are one of the greatest actors of all time. And I, wow, I'm, sound, I'm, I don't, I'm not just thank saying that because we're sitting here. I actually mean that. I think Jesse James is a masterpiece. You're phenomenal. Thank you. When you work with a filmmaker like someone like Fincher, uh, obviously it's 20 years since Fight Club. What do you take Crazy. from that set? Isn't that wild? What do you take yeah. from that set and still use here? Like, what is something that you remember Fincher telling you on Fight Club that you still take with you? Well, first of all, Fincher's one of my closest friends yeah. that I, I see every I see weekly and we, <laughs> and we, we laugh our asses off <laughs> but Fincher was probably the I mean meeting Fincher changed everything for me um, yeah. he just had it was the first time I heard someone talk about film the way I believed in film but could could articulate it so much better than me what's in the box and and, and since then you know just the feeling on his sets, you know, being a being a child of '70s films, it's like, ah, oh, this guy, this guy, yes, yes, he's talking complexities, he's talking um, the gray areas, um, mm. he's talking how to achieve it with camera, and he, and, and those that have come before us, and, and I, it just changed everything. It's been been a, a really um, valuable professional relationship, certainly. Yeah, and he's, and he's funny as shit. He's, <laughs> he's amazing. Guy. Funniest guy I know. Uh, I told you this last night, my wife and I, true romance means everything to us, and Floyd is obviously one of my favorite characters of all time. I love that character. I'm on the couch and the guy cocks the shotgun, he goes, huh? <laughs> he's so much a funny character. You mentioned on the carpet last night that you loved, it. Uh, where is he now? And you say he's probably hanging out with Lebowski. I have been thinking about that since you said that last night. How would that go down? What would they say to each other? I would I pay a thousand dollars to watch but that movie. you know movie. those guys would have such a good time? What and would they, they would get nothing accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. But damn, would they enjoy themselves. Get that movie made, please. Play, plan B's next That's movie. Hilarious. Lebowski That's meets hilarious. Floyd. That'd be amazing. Hey, congratulations. This All right, movie thank is you so much.